Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at Azure Monitor with Log Analytics. Hi guys, today we are going to be looking at Azure Monitor again, and this time we're using Log Analytics. Now, over the last two videos, we looked at uh, Azure Monitor in the general sense and how you can use it for alerting. Then we looked at how you can use automation that is triggered by Azure Monitor. Today, we're going to be looking at Azure Monitor and Log Analytics so that you can get historical data out of various resources on Azure. And we're going to be looking at how Monitor will store that data, and then you can use log analytics to query that data to get valuable information out of it. It could be aggregate data that is something like CPU utilization over a period of time, or if you want to get specific events that are in a syslog or something like that. All these kinds of things are things that you can get out of Azure Log Analytics in the context of Azure Monitor. So let's go right over the portal and take a look at Azure Monitor and Log Analytics there. I'm here in the Azure portal and I want to look at the metrics and logs for this particular VPN that's on this virtual machine. Now, I am not really looking at a VPN per se. I'm looking at a virtual machine that runs a VPN concentrator that's using OpenVPN. So this is a virtual machine uh, under the hood. It's going to have a lot of things that are very virtual machine specific. And those are the kinds of things that I'm going to be getting out of my logs here. So we've looked at alerts already, and we've looked at how you can use that for uh, alerting against Azure uh, events, as well as things that happen on the VPN. We looked at how you can use that to send emails, and then how you can invoke workbooks down here to get automation. So you can do various things through automation as well when things happen. Um, let's look at, we've already looked at metrics, and we've looked at uh, these kinds of metrics, how you can use these to get insights into your virtual machines. This is more real-time data. Uh, logs are going to be historical data, and that's really the difference between like metrics and logs. Logs also has events associated with it as well, while metrics is mostly looking at things like you know, things that are measurable, like CPU utilization or network I.O. or things like that. But with logs, I can look at things like syslog and events that happen inside of my virtual machine and over time. And so this data is stored, and then I can then use log analytics to query it using a query language called Custo. So with this, I can launch log analytics right here in the context of this virtual machine. If I was to go to monitor up here, I can get to monitor that way, and then I can pull up the same panel for multiple virtual machines if I wanted to, or for other kinds of resources. And I can also get to it right here under monitor on the menu. So lots of different ways, but doing it in the VM just gives you context specific information to this specific virtual machine. But if I wanted to get other virtual machine information, I can definitely do that by changing the scope. So within the context of this virtual machine, I'm getting virtual machine queries that are pre-built for this VM right here, or other VMs. It's not specific to this VM. But if I wanted to get other kinds of queries that I might be interested in, I can change the filter on this particular uh, panel right here, and I can select, say, app services and get stuff related to app services, so then get app logs and things like that for this particular Azure Monitor instance that I'm running in this case. But that's really not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in virtual machines because I'm running a VM. So I'm going to do resource filter based on VMs. And that's going to then give me all the pre-built queries, say, for virtual machines. Let's say if I wanted to get for things for syslog. And uh, if I wanted to get uh, the kinds of things for syslog that are here inside, this will show show login, syslog and event tables such as login. So search multiple tables. Um, so let's run this one and see what happens. So I'm not getting any information about logins, so I don't have anything in my logins. So let's modify this query a little bit. Um, let's see, let's, that's basically do, allow me to do a search. So if I want to just get everything in syslog, I can just type in syslog right here, and that will then show me everything in the syslog that I have. And so I'm getting all the syslog events that this thing has logged so far. And this one is... Uh, pulling up information about uh, kernel events. So a couple of things that are warnings against the kernel that contain the kernel. And this is just kernel warnings that if you were wanting to get a more secure kernel than what this VM has, you might want to 
you know, look at these and, and then consider what they're talking, trying to tell you. And then uh, you can then use that for information. So if I wanted to get just warning, uh, warning, uh, warnings from Azure and from a syslog, I could then do the um, pipe right here. And uh, then this would uh, then give me a, a filter that I can use if I want to use that. So if I do warn where security level um, equals equals warn, that would just show me all the warning events that I have in my syslog, which is really all it's reported so far. So I'm just getting warning right there. So that's one way you can filter data if I just want to see warning. I can also you know, look at the facility, which is basically the syslog that was reported. There, there are others, you can use user or local, or there's, there's several other ones that you can talk about there. And it's going to give me the host name. If I was running multiple VMs, uh, I could get all the warnings across multiple VMs and it would just show me the host name or I can filter it by host name right here. So again, lots of things that you can do with filtering if you're looking for specific events inside of monitor right here. So that's a quick overview of the querying capabilities of this. It can do a ton of more than what I've, I've talked about here. There is literally all kinds of queries you can build with this and even graphs uh, associated with this. And uh, I'm not really going to be able to teach everything there is to know about this particular query language, but you can actually go over here and click on language reference and it'll take you to the Azure docs for it. And it will show you uh, various things that you can do with the query language. And there are literally hundreds of ways that you can slice and dice this data and get very detailed information about various things, uh, very rich query language for doing uh, things inside of Azure anal uh, log analytics. But now that we've looked at queries, I want to look at the source data for this, which is really the tables right here. Now tables, or where the data is stored and the the tables gives you a bunch of different things that you are actually tracking so for virtual machines i'm, I'm tracking these different tables right here uh, the syslog i turned on under diagnostic settings so if i was to go over to diagnostic settings i can turn on syslog this isn't one of the default ones but because i turned it under diagnostic settings it now shows up right here and then i can then look at the various kinds of data uh, that I can query right here. So if I wanted to get stuff related to process information, I can just type in VM process um, and it's going to give me the ability to look at VM process information. And if I just run this, it's just going to return every record in the, the table. And uh, But if I wanted to filter it, say by a specific process, I could do that. So if I have a various process here, if I wanted to look at, you know, I can do that. I think my display name is the one I might want to be interested in. Let's say there's one for sudo. This is a VPN. So maybe I should look at the actual VPN process. So let's do VPN process. And then I can do another, you know, pipe here and then do where display name uh, right here uh, equals equals and then open VPN and that will filter it. Uh, down to you know 20 records inside of this process uh, table right here showing me various things about it uh, and I'm nothing nothing particular uh, mind blowing about this but if I drill down into it I can get you know different kinds of data about it you know PID information and get you know start when did it start when is uh, different kinds of you know data about it again there's a lot of data in this so if I wanted to look at something else that might give me some graphs here or a chart I can do that as well so I'm going to come over here to um, ports VM bound ports and this is going to be able to show me <clears throat> data about traffic coming into my virtual machine so let's let's change up my query here for VM bound port right here and this is basically just going to give me data about my uh, traffic coming in here. So let's run this to see what I got here. Now I've got a bunch of different ports here and a bunch of different processes. So I've got port SSH D and let's say if I want to be interested in the data that was sent from this particular uh, daemon, this process right here. So I'm going to set a filter on that and I'm going to do um, where and um, let's do a equals equals process name. Let's get a process name first and then equals equals SSHD and uh, put some quotes around that and port equals equals 22. And so that should give me the process, the SSHD port uh, daemon on port 22, which is what 
that particular process runs on. So I've got about 1500 records on this. So uh, this is just giving me the raw data right here. But let's say if I wanted to graph this, I can come over here to charts and I could get some data about this. So this this chart doesn't really make a whole lot of sense right now. It's just showing me port on the y axis This is always going to be port 22. And so that's really never going to change. It's got some, I guess, right there, uh, so summing up port 22, I guess, uh, in a, because the, the time slice in this is doubling that. This doesn't really make sense. But if I was to change the y-axis a little bit here, let's say bytes received, it's going to make a little bit more sense. Now, now I've got a filter basically looking at a daemon uh, and the port number, and it's showing me the uh, bytes received over the last 24 hours. So um, not much activity. This is probably just internet background noise right here until uh, a few a few hours ago, about an hour or so ago when I logged into this VM and uh, I did some you know shell commands on it and I was getting some more data. So we see this spike right here. So I know that was me doing something on this virtual machine. And I could change this uh, to say byte sent. And you can see there I'm getting a lot more data out of this. So this is just kind of internet background noise. Uh, folks trying to just probe port 22. And then this right here is just some data that it was sending back to me on that port whenever I was doing some shell commands against it. So you can see there I'm doing some uh, transfers there. So you can use this for uh, doing charting as well. If I wanted to change the period for, let's say, the last hour, let's see if that, um, see if that doesn't change things up a little bit. And if I'll come over to chart and then uh, change that back to bytes sent and received um, about an hour ago is when I logged in. So yeah, that's what I'm looking at here. So I'm getting you know more granular time slicing here, but still get the uh, the idea that I have uh, more bytes sent in, sent when I was logged in. And this is just kind of internet background noise right there. So again, you can use this to get some charts like this, and you can also use this to get just raw event data like we saw with the syslog data. So very useful tool for doing uh, analytics against various things on various resources on Azure. You just kind of have to figure out what data is available and then use the custo query language which to generate results, uh, either chart them in a grid or you can build charts like this or that are more visual. So again, very useful tool. And this is something that I use quite a bit in other resources as well as virtual machines. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com. And there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.